Hey, hey everyone. Tonight we're actually going to do something a little different. I've been kind of going through the different uh, sims and it kind of dawned on me, I'm like, which one of these sims do I enjoy the most when it comes to the menus? And I don't know if you're like me, but when I get into a, a new game or a new sim title or any kind of new game, I immediately um, spend a good 10, 15 minutes checking out the user experience of how it feels to kind of navigate the menus. So I figured, you know what, why not just spend some time going through each of the titles. And so I figured I'd start off with Assetto Corsa Competizione. I didn't do Assetto Corsa, the original one. And as you can see, I don't have my webcam or anything on because I literally wanted to just focus on the menu on the user interface and not have any uh, webcam or anything like that blocking any view. So the, one of the reasons I didn't do um, a set of course of the original one is because there hasn't really been any more support for that game since, uh, you know, I would say a good couple of years, I think, since uh, the game has come out. There hasn't been really kind of any updates to it or any uh, modifications or anything to it. I'll, aside from content manager. Now, for anybody who um, does use a set of course and knows content manager, know how, knows how valuable of a piece of software that actually is. And I think um, that would require, I think, just doing a video solely on that. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna focus on, you know, these the current titles, titles that are still being supported, you know, hot fix updates, whatever it may be. Uh, so we'll focus on these. So Assetto Corsa Competizione, for me, I think has really clean, modern, uh, minimalist type of interface. And I think these are the kind of things that, um, you know, attract me to a game. If I get into a game and I find it quite complicated to figure out where to go, what to do, and we'll get to one of those titles uh, soon, makes it very difficult to feel like you're immersed in the game. It takes a while because you have to spend so much time navigating the menus before you get into racing. Uh, so the first thing, I'll just go to and do exactly what I usually do. I usually immediately hit the options menu and go in and see what different options there are. So let's start off in video. And one thing I actually, you know, and the reason I, other reason I want to do this is because I always find uh, if I'm watching videos, I want to see the menus. I want to see, you know, does it support my wheel? Does it um, have good audio options? What are the types of assists and, and things that I can do in the game to really make it personal for me? So uh, let's let's go in and check out the video because one thing with Assetto Corsa Competizione is it is a very um, power hungry game. And one of the one of the reasons for that is because it's based on the Unreal Engine, and Unreal Engine requires a lot of horsepower to get it to run really well. Now, my screen is a 3840 by 1600. That's not really a big deal, but I run it at its native resolution. But the thing that's nice is down here you can scale the resolution, so I can run it at my native resolution and then scale it down so that I get a little bit more of a smoother. Um, a smoother experience with it. If we look in here, you can have video presets, which is really nice. So if you, you know, like I switch sometimes from this screen, I go to my 65 inch OLED, or if you have somebody who's running in a triple screen, or if you have somebody who wants to run different types of resolutions on there, whether they want a streaming setup or they want, you know, the graphics as concerns, so you can save your presets, which I think is a really good option to have. And then as we go down, you know, you have your standard, you know, shadows, aliasing, post-processing, all those main things. But then you have areas which are specifically focused on virtual reality, which is really nice. And then you have some other advanced, uh, advanced options where it comes to, you know, the level of detail in the car, the foliage, bloom, whatever it may be. So you have a lot of different options there. And then going down even further here, here's where you can start working on the actual image, what you're seeing in the games, whether you want it to be blasted as far as color, uh, you want to kind of dial it down a little bit so it's a little bit desaturated, you want a bit more contrast, a bit more exposure. So I really like the fact that in a set of course of competition, they give you a lot of options when it comes to your video setup. In audio, you have your, a lot of your basics. Um, you know, the onboard exterior tires and chassis. I like in a sim when you can 
have separate settings for each individual thing. Like if I don't want to hear the Tyler squeaks, you know, constantly going on, if it's annoying to me, then I'd like to be able to dial that down. Um, you know, from the opponents, the weather, I think it's a nice feature to have in a sim to be able to control and customize each individual detail, whether it's onboard, exterior tires, your chassis flex, um, damage, things like that. So I think that's really good to have as well. And once we'll leave controls for last there in general, um, you know, here, because I do have a Fanatec set up and I do run Fanalab in the background. For example, you come in here and disable that D-Box uh, support. And one thing I learned by mistake is I didn't have my replay maximum length set up. I think I had it for maybe it was at 30 minutes. Yeah, I had it at 30 minutes and I was like going back to look at a replay because I said, oh, I knew somebody had punted me somewhere and I couldn't go back early enough. And I was like, oh, there's got to be a reason why. And there you go. So you want to put this at as much as you can. Uh, replay quality, uh, replay highlights, things like that, you know, pit crew animations, pit markers, your rating. And so these are, you know, your basic options. Assists. Um, you know, I try to run as many things manual except for the engine start. <laughs> it's happened to me a couple of times where I've been in playing and I just, uh, for some reason didn't map a button or forgot to load my setting with my engine start mapped and I couldn't get my car going. I'm like, okay, just leave that on automatic. That'll be fine. So you can, you know, set up for pro or beginner. I usually just go into custom and have everything on manual as much as I can. As far as HUD. Now, if you're somebody like me, I love options. I love to customize the heck out of a game so it's nice when you can go in and and see all the different things uh, that you can can control the user or the hud i actually scale it down to 80 percent because i find the default hud at 100 percent is a bit too big you know if you're running on a smaller screen you probably want to boost that up to 100 or keep it at 100 percent you can control the left and right margins so that's how far each side of the hud scales out or in uh, gear speed, you know, standard stuff, circuit map, tires, and session info. One thing I like that they did add here is the centered comms panel. So what happens is if you have this enabled, basically you'll get all your messages in the center. So if you disable it, your messages will be off to the right. I don't like messages popping up in front of me all the time. So I like that they add that option in there. And finally, for controls, when you load up a wheel, whether you have a Simi Cube or a Fanatec, you can see there's a support for pretty much every Fanatec wheel or combo out there. Because I have the DD loaded, it'll show my DD with all the different steering wheel options. I have my personal ones down here. But if you were to load a Club Sport wheel or a CSL Elite wheel, you'll see CSL Elite wheel here with all the different steering wheel options that are there. Here you can obviously go in and map it, you, I didn't have to calibrate anything in here. It read it perfectly. Assetto Corsa uh, Capazione actually is really good when it comes to mapping. So if you have a button box, if you have like an Elgato Stream Deck, or if you have plenty of buttons on your wheel, you can map to your heart's content with this. So you can just go through mapping on your keyboard on a, game a gamepad or in the wheel. So I have uh, the keyboard using my button box. I have a lot of things mapped to it, but what's really nice, and not all games do this, but let me just scroll down here. So when you're on a Formula V2 wheel or the Porsche podium wheel or any wheel that you have um, multi-position switches, you can go in and map each one. So I have my, say my left one set uh, for each of the 12 inputs. I have it mapped out to set different traction control right up to 12. So 12 will turn it off. So it'll go back to zero. And the same thing for my ABS. Uh, controls, again, you have tons of options, tons of things you can do with it. And that's as far as the menus are in the options control. So championship, you can go in here, start a new or resume. Um, I did go through the special events menu a while ago, but I mean, this is the new layout. You have all the previous events that you've done so you can go back and see what you did from each of the seasons and this is the current season season seven you can go in and do your single player so you can choose the 2018 2019 or the gt and eventually the gt4s will pop in here probably you can set up you know practice hot lap hot lap super pole hot stint quick race and endurance eight hour weekend endurance nine hour 10 12 and 24 hour then you can obviously do your custom race set I'd like the way the tracks are laid out, but I would have much preferred if they were scrolling 
uh, vertically rather than horizontally because sometimes when I'm looking for a track I'm scrolling all the way to the left or scrolling all the way to the right and if you're using a mouse you kind of have to scroll multiple times before you get to the end so I would have kind of probably preferred it to be here maybe in blocks of two so I could just literally quick select which one I want and of course the cars this is my little Porsche I love this one so you what's nice is you can zoom in and out of the car you can get a nice wide, wide view of it if you want to see you can get your rain lights on indicators on you can go in the showroom this is what i was talking about the live wallpaper so you can just let this run and it'll give you a nice little view of your car from multiple angles to go in and select your cars you know you have your selection of cars here but right now we're in the gt challenge menu so that's why we're not seeing all of them so if i go back and i put say 2019 and I go back in. Now I'll see all these. Hold on a second. There we go. So now we're seeing more of the cars. So we're seeing all the 2018 cars. So it's just it's a nice selection. You know, you go in your Ferraris. You can go in and see what each one of them are. And then you can select from all your different liveries. Which is nice. And then you can select your driver. These are the real world drivers that are in each of those cars. So I think it's, it's, you know, it's quite clean. You set up your individual realism settings. You can set up your weather and track conditions. So you can make it dynamic or you can make it custom. And your assists. So, you know, I like the way they go back. If we go back to the main menu here, you can see I like the way they do it. Everything where it's uh, that square... I always say like the Stockholm look where it's very clean, very minimal. But, you know, here you have your career multiplayer. I'll go in there really quick in a second. But in the driver, you can go in and customize each of these drivers now. So if we customize, we can pick each one of these teammates and we can start customizing, you know, their abbreviation, their nationality category and the different colors between their gloves, suits and helmet. The gloves, actually, you can't change the color. You can only change the style. So... Uh, which is kind of cool. And of course, the one of the big things in a set of courses is your rating. So I'm at gold. Am I at gold? Yes, I am at gold right now. And so this gives you all your, you see this menu in the race. You say it's sitting off onto the side. So this is, you know, going from your track competence to your race craft, how well you control the car, your competition points. I haven't been doing any competitions because it's just timing. I've never get a chance to, to jump in. Other than that, the other thing is your multiplayer. So you can quick join. Oh, you know what? I was saying I never get to jump into a competition server. Well, I have a registration that I can do in six minutes. But, of course, I'm doing something else right now. And here you can obviously go in and select all your cars. And then if you're looking for the server list, you click in here, and these are all the servers. Now, the one thing is that you cannot organize this by drivers in a server, kind of like an pretty much all, all the other games you can organize this where you set it to the rooms that have the most drivers to the least and then if I don't want to show rooms that don't have any people in it like you see you have tons here so sometimes you scroll down and you'll pop in you'll see one room that has six and then one that has one and then another one that has 20 and so it's I'd rather be able to customize that to show rooms or to sort by rooms with drivers in it uh, one little thing that I would like to do the other thing that's cool is if you scroll down, you'll see right under here, if you have a friend that's in the room, you'll see it'll say friends one. So you know which uh, room your friends are in. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for Assetto Corsa Competizione. It's got uh, a nice clean interface. And this is new here where you can set up a new championship. So let's say a new season. And you want to decide whether you want to do the 2018, 2019 or the GT intercontinental and then obviously when the gt4s come out you'll be able to select that that is a set of corsa competition i am going to um to another game so i'm just going to pause really quick load up another game and i'll be right back but now we are into automobilista 2 and this again i think it's kind of the trend where we're starting to see like really clean uh type of interface uh keeping it minimal uh, that's the nice thing about some of these more current games. I think they're getting the idea that it's just let's keep the menus really simple and minimal and easy to kind of navigate. Uh, when you look at the layout of, of the way Automobilista 2 is set up, it resembles quite a bit the Project Cars 2, but I think they've, you know, 
upgraded it a bit here and there to make it quite uh, quite clean and really again you look at this interface you know exactly where you're going and exactly what you want to do whether you're going into multiplayer or time trial championship eventually when it becomes available single race and test day so those are the options you have now i know that uh career they're supposed to uh, release that post launch and so uh, you know we'll have another tab where you'll have career maybe this will be split in two and you'll have career on the top and championship at the bottom this is another game that does give you quite a bit of options and for those who like to see menus uh, much like myself here are the different things you can do so in gameplay and that's the one thing with uh, Optimal Ballista 2 is that you do have a lot of customizations that you can as far as the gameplay is concerned. So one thing is a little bit of a clunky menu right now until it gets fixed. As far as the display is concerned, right now they don't have the full and light HUD. You have to go in and actually edit the, the HUD to get the light version. Um, driving line, turn indicator, track map. Um, so in this here, you can have the cockpit wheel driver. It's either off or on. You don't have the cockpit wheel driver without the hands or without the wheel. It's either is off or on. Visual effects. So these are not as far as your resolution and game options. These are exterior sun flare. Usually I have that set to chroma. So actually, you know what? Heat haze, I usually like to leave it on. It just keeps defaulting to off. Exposure compensation. So this menu is exactly the same as it was in Project Cars 2. Uh, camera settings, there's a lot of different camera settings. Um, and I have my uh, cockpit and helmet camera set at 75 because I like to have my field of view up quite close because then I have mapped to my button box to be able to move the seat forward or backwards. So I leave this at 75. The others I leave at default. As far as configuration, this is, I have these two off because but this is kind of carried over from Project Cars 2 where you have this like horizon uh, movement that happens in the car or if you're either going off track or if you hit a bump or if you're going up a hill where you feel like you're literally on a roller coaster because your car is constantly moving up and down and I've decreased the world movement all the way to zero but it still happens so it's not based on um, it's, they need to actually implement a horizon lock which is the only way they're going to be able to prevent that uh, so show helmet helmet depth of field helmet leaning and camera leaning so as you're turning into the corner i have that look to the apex usually i set it at 30 but i just like i said before there's so many updates happening i just leave everything at default for now but when the final game is i'll probably drop that to 30. i don't like where the car i look too much to the to the apex at turning controls again there's still some optimization you can see where the text is cut off like you see fanatec dd1 formula v2 rim but it underneath it does says separate pedals and then i can't tell as you go through the kind of yeah so you can see there it says separate pedal but they need to fix the text on that and obviously your calibration uh, and your clutch controls your configuration and then if you like to map out it's not as full-fledged as a set of course of competition but you do have quite a few options you know if you get into the vehicle you can you know, as far as anti-roll bars uh, brake bias so these are the only ones i really map brake bias forward backwards and then traction and abs control so you map these out and then camera view you know look up left right down and this is i was saying on my button box i have this mapped where you can move seat forward back up and down these are more vr options and then for the game. So I always map out my Motec and I always map out the HUD view to be able to switch through the different HUD views. And of course, force feedback. Force feedback here uh, has less options. So you're really down to low force boost and FX. That's really the only thing until you decide you want to use a custom force feedback profile. So, and where else do we go? Okay, performance. So this is where you set what the game's going to look like. You know, I have it, usually I have it set to 143, but We'll leave it at 119 for now. That's fine. I'm not racing tonight. So, you know, it's got your pretty much your standard options in here. And in audio, same thing. So all the audio you can, you don't have like, you know, your chassis and your brakes, but um, customize quite a few different things. But, you know, you don't need that much uh, options in there. The other things they do have is your virtual reality. If you have that hooked up, triple screen support as well. Uh, and then in systems, so this is your UDP. So if you're running SIM hub or RS dash or any of those type of external applications on an iPad or crew chief or anything like that, that's where you'd need to set this. So uh, 
currently it's working on the Project Cars 2 setup. You have to set it to Project Cars 2, Project Cars 2 here, and on at 1. Now, uh, 1 or 2, I think, usually is fine. That's a quick look at uh, the options menu. In here, single race, basic settings, you know, your opponent settings, your rules and regulations for each of the race, your circuit selection, vehicle selection, and your race settings as well as whether you want to have a practice uh, or qualifying, how long you want the qualifying to be. And that would be the same thing in test day. Test day, you have your session, your circuit, and your vehicle selection. Time trial. This is a bit disappointing um, because in time trial, I was expecting to have, you know, like events that would be in here. But this is basically pick your car, pick a track, and you'll see some populated leaderboard times in there. And you can obviously load a ghost if you want. And this would be based on your friends or on the global. But really it's, I'm not, probably wouldn't spend much time in there personally because there's no incentive, I guess, to, to get in there. And then of course, the multiplayer. The way the multiplayer is laid out, but if you, oh, that's the first time I've actually seen that many rooms uh, online. I literally have never had to scroll past here, I would say, so that's a good sign. You're going to be able to pick your circuit, your vehicle, and it tells you what the session is, whether it's 15 laps, 10 laps, or whatever. Um, quick chat here before you jump in if you want in the waiting room. But if you wanted to create your own race, we we'll create a new one. So in here, you know, as far as your host settings, you can require a password. You want it to be public or private uh, if you want a broadcasting mode on. Uh, the realism settings, the opponent settings, you know, how strong the AI you want to be. And then rules and regulations, of course, circuit and vehicle selections and your standard, you know, race settings and session settings. I just want to see how detailed this is. Yeah, so you can force interior view. Yeah, so if you play Project Cars 2, this is almost carbon copy of that. Cool, yeah. So I like this. Again, you know, this is a nice follow-up to uh, Assetto Corsa because it's got the same type of clean layout very simple very easy and you have a couple icons here which is you know the replays so if you have any replays saved there so this will eventually bring up your profile card we'll be able to change your name and update your stat but yeah so that's a quick look at uh, automobilista 2 i'm going to pop in another game and we'll be right back all right so we are in dirt rally 2. i think one thing that codemasters does really well is they uh do a really great menu system. Now, if you look at Dirt Rally, if you look at, uh, you know, Grid, not a hugely popular game, but, you know, again, same thing, or any of the F1 games, they tend to do a really good job when it comes to the menu layout. So this is where you're managing pretty much your whole career, your team. The other menu would have would be free play, so being able to go and do some historic uh, tracks, doing the World Ra Rally Cross Championship, Free Roam, the Race Net Clubs, which is actually works really well. And if you look at, you know, you have time trial and your custom setup, so you can, you know, create a custom championship. So let's go back. And if you've recently downloaded the uh, Colin McRae DLC, that all lives under its own menu, which is really nice. So if you're in the Colin McRae, I'll take you through that in a second and the store so this store will jump you out of here and it'll take you back to steam so you can you know purchase any dlc and then in options so again i love to go with the options first so let's see how this is laid out let's look at what game settings you have so these are all your list of assists depending on what you have if you have a sequential shifter uh, five speed you can go in here and adjust that whether it's h pattern so i have the fanatec club sports sequential shifter so i can swap it back and forth between sequential and h pattern so i usually tend to whoops i usually tend to run it in sequential so i leave it there but you can run with clutch with a manual or sequential you can do it with uh, h pattern with clutch or manual or sequential so you have a lot of uh, options you can use here or automatic or semi-automatic, but we'll leave it at manual sequential. Uh, there, you know, these are pretty much standard, but except for auto repairs, auto repairs. Uh, I've done it quite a few times where you hit a hill on the side and you end up spinning your car and you can't finish the race. So auto repairs would be good. Lunch control, lunch. Did I just say lunch control? I think I did. Launch control, stability control, traction control, and time control braking. And then as far as preferences. These are your field of view, your camera shake. I turn this off completely because if you're on a track like Argentina, 
a very, very bumpy track. You could probably get nauseous just uh, running that course. So I keep the no shake all the way down. And as far as the co-driver calls, you know, you can customize that whether you, he want, you want him to do the pace notes either later or earlier. I drop it down maybe by one or two points, just all the pace notes coming in a little bit earlier so I have time to think and then react. And other things, you know, the cockpit wheel drive, resume countdown. And as far as the on-screen display, you usually don't run the progress bar on. I don't know why that's on, but anyway, proximity arrows. This is more for rally cross and timing and rearview mirror. So these are your basic uh, visuals. Graphic settings, again, so I'm running this at 2560, 1067. And that's a custom resolution that I did in the NVIDIA control panel because I found with this one, I like to try and get it running at 144. And so, you know, these are your basic settings as far as resolution. And then you go into your advanced graphic settings. So as far as shades, uh, shader, shadows, and all these are very similar in all the Codemaster games. So once you get comfortable with one game, you pretty much know what you're gonna get in the other game. The only thing that would be different in this one as opposed to F1 would be, I think the God Rays and Light Streaks and Lens Dust. I don't think those are in Formula 1 2019. We'll check it out. But, and then obviously your brightness settings. So let's do audio first. Audio again, all your basic. And so what I find here is that when you're running the system EQ with the dynamic range, if you're running two speakers, Put the dynamic range on low so what happens is your spotter um, when you're getting your paste notes it actually comes through a lot clearer if you have that on you know say high it just kind of gets muffled you don't hear them as much and then uh, you know your system eq whether you want to be on a tv headphones or whatever you could just run that but I would keep the dynamic range on low if you want your spotter to come through a lot clearer. So as far as the input is concerned, you can see my, this is the default. I didn't have to create this. So it does detect right away whether you have, um, you know, a podium. If you check here, edit device, uh, you can go in and you can start mapping them out. But let's go back here. If you go device options, if you load a device preset, you'll see them all here. So these are all the different options. Exactly like in a Soto Corsa where you, you see your base and then you diff the different wheel types. So if you don't, if it's not working for whatever reason, hit device options, open it up, load a pre preset device and find yours and then map that out after. So once you do find that, you can go in and edit it. And if you wanna change anything here, you can map out the different buttons. Some things you can't map, but some things you can, like all these here, menu navigations, you can't map them. And then in advanced setting, these are all your saturation and your dead zones and so forth, which is pretty much standard in most games. And then your vibration and feedback. Your self-aligning torque would be like your force feedback strength. Here you have your import reporting, so your steering, your throttle and your brake, and your clutch. I actually, <laughs> you probably saw that, right? So I said clutch, but I'm using my clutch on my V3 pedals. I have that actually mapped to my handbrake because I don't have a handbrake. So when I'm turning the corners, I map my handbrake to my clutch so that I can just, you know, when I'm giving gas, I just give a quick uh, kick on my clutch and it just helps me to spin through a corner. So a little trick there. I don't know if you want to use that or not, but uh, it works great for me anyway. So yeah, so that's as far as we get. I mean, obviously we don't need to go through legal and things like that. RaceNet is basically to sign in and your profile is just your your character that you choose, which he doesn't look anything like me. So in my team, obviously you have your garage and these are all your vehicles. So you can go through and select. You can either jump to them, you know, through here, you can have all your different 2000s, your NR4s, just basic detail on them. You get a bit of history on what you've done with the car, whether you, how much, how many kilometers you've driven, how many podiums and, and that you've had, and a bit of history on the actual car. So, I mean, there's not a ton of cars in this game. So having that navigation going horizontally, that's fine. Staff here, you know, this is something I, I mean, I don't know how many people actually use it, but I never use this. I mean, I'll go and upgrade some, one of them in there, but I don't actually fill this out. I mean, I have $2 million that I can go and kind of 
flesh these out, but I don't. So in events, this menu is, is not bad. I mean, it's pretty good as far as the way it's set up. So basically your career are the first two slots here. So you have your career rally, career rally cross. And then as you scroll, get back. As you scroll, you get your daily challenges. And so these are promos. These are special events that are on. All the rest of them are just your daily challenges, your uh, weekly challenges, and your monthly challenges. So by the time you get to the end, you have AI challenge, which I don't do those either, but I usually do just the community events. So like monthly, weekly, and daily challenges, because what that does is it helps to get you rewards so you can build up your cash flow. And then if you need to buy a car, you can go in and buy a car through that. So yeah, so that's that menu. Let's jump back over to Colin McRae. So in the Colin McRae DLC, it goes based on the years. So it's just when he first started, 84 to 89, 91 to 94, 95 to 98, and 99 to 2006. So you get scenarios in each one of them based on all the different cars that he's driven. Really cool. So yeah, that is the Dirt uh, Rally 2 menu system. And uh, yeah, I like it. And so far, if you look between the first three that we've done, which is Assetto Corsa, uh, Assetto Corsa Competizione, uh, Automobilista 2 and Dirt Rally, you can see that they do have a very clean menu system to them. Let's uh, jump back out. I'll load up another game. Let's go into, yeah, well, since we're in Codemasters, let's load up F1 2019 and we'll uh, take that for a run and see what that menu system is like. So this is the menu system for F1 2019. I actually really do like the way they've done F1 2019. It was a nice little upgrade from uh 2018 you have all your main things that you need right at this bottom menu system here so from your mail your calendar game options weekly events leagues and f1 2019 championship and then obviously news this is kind of everything that's happening in here but you'll see that doesn't pop open the reason it doesn't is because i don't have my steam overlay uh, enabled so it won't jump out and I'd just rather not hit that by mistake and end up popping out of my game so I just keep that off so this is your home menu your home menu is really about you know what's going on across your career across your multiplayer um, any leagues or whatever you might be doing everything is all here on the main page I don't know if it's just a trend or what's going on but you can see that a lot of game designers are they're working with your landing page just gives you everything you need to do and I think it's a it's a good thing. It's a smart thing that they're doing. Uh, once you're off your home page, you can hit over to solo. And in solo, this is really all about your career, this main block here that you see. And then you can do an individual Grand Prix. You can do individual championships. So these are different scenario type championships. If we go in here, you'll see this is the last. So I did. I purchased the Legends uh, editions, which gave me the Senna versus Prost uh, competition. So really, this all this was time attack and overtake challenge the only difference is that it's either senna or prost that you're running so that's really all that was there was no storyline there was no you know video or anything on each one of them i thought it would have been a lot more in depth um, invitational events these are all the things that happen to pop up through your career so as you're going you get these you know pursuits or time attack which is exactly like the senna versus prost but it's um with all the different classic cars that are in there different type of custom championships that are preset for you that are pre-done um, so yeah so that's all the championships are and then time trial is you can choose and i love this i think this is a really smart way that they did this of having like f1 2019 classic 2018 and then f2s to make it look like one car but it's just all the different uh, all the different types of categories you can go into so this is really smart design choice that they did. So that's really where it comes to solo play. Uh, multiplayer, you have your weekly events. So in your weekly events, you'll have a practice session, a qualifying session, and then a race. And then from that, you'll get competition points uh, that you can use to build up to go into the store and buy, you know, uh, liveries and things like that for your car. Here you can choose ranked, unranked, or a local game. And then obviously your leagues. So they added this, I just, I never got into it, but you can, you know, join a league or create a league. So if you go to find a league, you'll get a suggested, which is what pops up right away. So these are some suggested leagues you can get into. So once you get in there, you can actually access a calendar and it'll show you all the different events that your league has, which is really cool. Uh, I just don't know how much people actually utilized it or if they continue to use um, exterior sources to do um, to do leagues 
ranked if you go in there you have to go in and you select how many laps you want and then unranked gives you the server browser so basically you can see all the different tracks that are available and what sessions they're in and then here at esports gives you all your information on esport events that are going on when you get into customization uh, you can go in here and you can check in all the different liveries that are available and what's nice about it is you don't have to purchase the car you can go in and change the color I need to brighten that up first so you can go in and try different colors on your car and see what it looks like first. And then you can say, oh, yeah, I think that's cool. If you like it, purchase it. And that's the same with the driver. You can do also the same thing. Uh, you go in here and you can select your profile. That's all your basic stuff. But as far as the suit's concerned, if you wanna buy either the suits that are in the game already, classic suits, or you can go and buy premium suits. So this, you need to go to the store so you need to go to the Steam store to be able to buy these. Again, and then the same thing with the gloves. You would need to go to the store to buy them or with what's in-game. All right, and then your badges. So these are all the different badges that you kind of, you gain or you can buy within the game. And then you can also do the premium badges, which again, take you out to the store. And then the showroom. So the showroom was actually a really nice feature that they added. So the showroom, you go in, you could say, I want to look at the um, Mercedes car. It gives you a bit of data on the car. Hopefully they continue that with, 20, uh, with F1 2020. Yeah, so you have all your cars in there. And then the last thing is theater. So what they've done in this is that you can obviously save your highlights, but what they've done is if you go in to the theater mode and your previous, I guess, previous three races, it saves the highlight, so it does a highlight video. So if you just go in and click this, it's going to show the highlight from that recent race that you just did. And it's just basically taking little clips from, kind of like what you do on Twitch, you create highlights, you create clips, it does the same thing. And so yeah, so that's the menu system and uh, game options. So let's go through this really quick. Game options, so obviously the same thing as in Dirt, you have your presets here. I have my presets saved down here. So if I go in here and hit edit, I can go in and obviously map everything out, do my calibration, which is exactly like in Dirt, your vibration and force feedback settings. And then you can have MFD shortcuts. So if you have buttons on your wheel that you wanna map, like the car damage panel, uh, your brake bias, uh, differential, ERS mode, you can map those all out. So same thing with audio, you know, you have your basic settings in audio, advanced audio, dynamic range, like in Dirt Rally, uh, your upshift tone, I always have this off because it gets a bit annoying hearing that little beep constantly every gear. Uh, on your graphic options, so again, the same thing. So you choose your video mode, your resolution, your frames per second, or your, sorry, your refresh rate that you want. You can set a maximum refresh rate, which I don't have on, and all your standard graphic settings. One thing that's cool is that they don't have in every game is a benchmark mode. So you can benchmark and just kind of the system will suggest the best settings or set it up the best based on your graphics and uh, you know what your system specs are. And then in your advanced settings, it's all the same thing. So set everything from your shadows to your car textures to the weather effects. Uh, and actually, let's see if the God Ray modes was in here. Yeah, no, it's not in here. Okay, so that was something specific to Dirt Rally. On-screen display, these are all the you know things that you have on your in your HUD. How you want to customize that, whether you want the map or the start lights and permanent session timer like that you know this tells you how much time is left in each session practice or quality and then telemetry this is again like dirt where if you have you know your fanatec leds or sli pro uh, motion systems or anything like that you can set your udp information in here oh the camera option well camera options are obviously a standard um these are my camera views for cockpit i'll leave that for a second if you want to take a quick look so the only thing I really change is have the offset uh, horizontal at 35 and then just take camera shake down and the look to apex really low. The final thing is the eye tracking. So if you use Toby eye track, uh, you can set up uh, all your settings for that in here. So that is F1 2019. I think we can probably jump out maybe one or two more. Uh, yeah, we'll do like, let's do a race room next. 
All right, we are back. Race Room is one that um, one game that I really, really enjoy, and I love to see that the fact that they keep um, updating and they keep, uh, you know, working on improving, uh, you know, in this game, whether it's, you know, constantly updating physics, constantly adding new content. I love the competition thing. I think that's the thing that attracted me the most to this game in the beginning was the fact that they had all these different competitions and all. So basically in Race Room, um, I like vertical menus. I'm so just think it's more natural to scroll up and down rather than left or right. And that's just a, a personal opinion. Uh, but if you look at this, you know, basically single player, multiplayer competitions in store. In single event, you can actually, you know, select how many AI opponents you want, what kind of AI opponents you have and apply them. And uh, let's just apply that. We don't really need that. You can select your car and track very clean. So it's just, you know, one or the other. And then here you can go down and adjust all the different in-game settings. Now, the one thing I do like is the adaptive AI. So you can set up, you know, AI strength. I like the adaptive AI because you can work on training them. Um, you know, pretty much like every standard game, you get all your, you know, your qualification, your race set times, and your, the format that you want to run. Now, as far as the cars, uh, if I'm not mistaken, probably the biggest selection of cars and variation um, from Formula cars. You have all the Formula, Formula US, which is the Indy cars, uh, Formula X, which is the future Formula cars, and then 90s, Formula 2, Formula 3, Formula Junior. You have GT cars, GTE cars, uh, GT4 cars, P1 cars. You have every car you can imagine. These are the cars I just I don't own, but you can see this list is quite extensive. It, touring cars, it pretty much covers the gamut. So as far as tracks are concerned, they have a huge track list as well. These are some that I just haven't bought yet, but you have everything from European tracks, American tracks, Asian tracks. Uh, they cover, and you know, as of course, they have a lot of tracks that are from Sweden because um, Sector 3 is a Swedish company. And so, yeah, so you have quite a few Swedish tracks in there as well. And they're actually quite nice. Some of the tracks that I've, I've run on, they're quite interesting. Of course, championship, you can set up a custom championship, how many seasons you want or how long you want, or not seasons, how long you want it to be and how many tracks you want in there. So custom championship is cool. Leaderboard challenge is basically pick a car, pick a track, and you'll be on a leaderboard and you can just constantly work your way up. And then from multiplayer, you can go into competitions, which is where I find myself going most of the time. These, you know, these are five new ones that have in the past uh, two weeks, they kind of been updated in there. And these are three brand new ones, brand new competitions that have been added. So these are featured events. So these are featured championships with, you know, prize money, you know, livery, uh, live races, whatever it may be. But these are the featured events and these are this, the monthly competitions that they add in. So that's one thing I really like about that. Then the store, which is going to bring me back again. The store is really where you see everything with in-game. So that's the one thing that's really nice about Race Room is that the store is built into the game. Hit the list of cars here. If you want to go in, you can see all the different car types that you, if you want to buy, if they're missing something, but it'll list it and based on what you don't have. So if you go down, these are all the cars that I do own already. But if you scroll up here, these are cars that you don't have, but it's also listed by cars that are on promotion that are on discount, like 90% off, 40% off. Same thing for tracks. So the tracks will be listed in order of what you don't have. So you see, these are the tracks that I don't own. And then you can just buy everything within here, which is really great. And so same thing. So sound settings, you know, you have pretty much uh, all the different settings that you want. Plus you have even more custom settings, which is the thing in race room. That's why it can be a little bit overwhelming when you're in here, you can look at it and go, Oh, but there's so many different settings. I don't know where to start. Just change the settings that you actually need to change. You know, if you find that your tire squeal or, or your brakes are sounding too, too loud, then just go in here and adjust that. Um, as far as the gameplay settings as well, you have your steering animations. So if you find that your steering in game is not matching your wheel, you can make sure this is set to match setup. That's a, a good way to make sure you're getting one-to-one -one, uh, rotation in game versus your real wheel. And, you know, again, you can go down here and set up all your different assists, the race line, your cockpit cameras, your HUD settings. If you're running like Otter HUD, that's why I run the third party Otter HUD. You have to shut all this off pretty much, except for the essentials. 
now because now they have ranked servers so if you're having incidents which is kind of like i racing uh the in-game overlays is you know you need to have that on to be able to see that then you can obviously save replays i don't have it on because it saves literally every race and i don't want to be building up all that in my hard drive uh control settings again I have all the different control settings set for the different wheels here. You can detect or load, uh, if you, as soon as you load in a wheelbase, whether it's a CSW, it should detect it. If it doesn't, all you need to go in is go in here and these will all say nothing. So nothing will be mapped. You just go in and map everything on your controls. And it's not hugely extensive, all the different mapping that you can do. I mean, it looks like it, but a lot of these are for, you know, replays and camera zooms and things like that. But the really the main things are here. These ones here that you see, like resetting your car, pausing, um, you know, force feedback input meter. If you have VR, if you have triple screen, but really the core of the settings that you're going to have are all right here. This first set of uh, settings here. And in advanced setting, these are all your uh, sensitivities, you know, your wheel rotation, as you can see here, uh, your brake throttle, your clutch. Um, so these are really where you can kind of customize the sensitivities. At default, these work really well. Um, I haven't really found the need to go in and, and um, you know, adjust any of these. The only thing you would might want to adjust is if you have an H shift pattern or an H pattern shift or a sequential. And then, of course, your force feedback settings. So force feedback settings in this um, are quite detailed. I mean, you can really go in and dial in so many different things, but I find just keeping it really simple. I was running a certain setting for a while and then went back in and after, you know, one of the devs kind of gave me a, a couple of tips, I went and dialed those in and I was couldn't believe the difference in it, but I've been running those settings and these are pretty much the settings I'm running now. So if you have a DD wheel and you want to try these, feel free. Let me get back up there. And then your video settings, you have, you know, your basic presets and then you can go in and do custom and set everything up in here. Uh, again, you know, there's no real need to go through all these, but these are all, you know, pretty much the same options in most games. God, this is going on a lot longer than I expected. Uh, the next one that we're going to go into is Cardcraft. Uh, as I said, this is a game that's still in early access, but as you can see, it's uh, very, very clean. There's not a huge amount of gameplay options in the game. It's really focused on practice or time trials or uh, multiplayer sessions. The multiplayer is actually in beta right now. So what's nice about um, Cardcraft is that everything is cloud saved. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, if you delete a folder, if your computer crashes, you don't have to worry about uh, losing your settings or anything because everything is set to the cloud. Basically, you know, this is your menu system. So if you hit drive, this takes you into all your main types of uh, categories. So you have your practice session, you have your race, which you're racing against AI. You have your time trial. So this is basic leaderboard and that's actually works really well. It's something that just makes you keep coming back and you want to play it over again. So I think the time trial is done really well and I'll just go through in and show you in a second. Now online is just something that they're testing right now. It's in beta. So basically what this is, is every, I believe 20 minutes you have a session. See, these are all just time practice sessions with different types of carts and uh, sorry, with different tracks and different car, you know, you try and set your best time in it. So it's, that's just a test run right now and time trial. So you pick either your KZ2 or your X30, you pick the track here, for example, so you see here globally, this is where I haven't done it in a while, but you see globally, nationally, this is for Canada and then your friends. And so basically every time you run a session, you're just constantly trying to pit against the next guy and it just keeps going. And then of course you can go in and do a race. You set up, you know, your map and the map, basically you have your six different tracks. This is an, a mod, but you have your six different tracks here. So here's your cart. And this is based on an unreal engine. So you can see it's a really nice menu system. So you can just really click and scroll. And so you could pick your driver, go in and customize his boots, his gloves, his suits. And what's nice about it is, you know, Brands, Bell, Arai, and yeah, so you have CRG, Deadly Factory. So you have all the different um, suits as well, and you can customize your boots and your helmet, and then your team, which buy a tent. I don't know why, buy a blue tent, and you can buy your drone, and then if you go to the shop, let me just get back into shop here. There we go. I thought I was in shop. 
Okay. So, yeah, so you buy these different types of vehicles, the X30 or the KZ2, you can go to the CRG and buy their version of the X30 or the KZ2. And then in notifications, if somebody has beaten you in time trial, you get your notification here. If you unlocked a new achievement, you'll get a notification in here. And in your profile is just your race number, your tagline, uh, your stats on your leaderboard. So really, really simple. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more things that are going to be added in here, especially in the online. But for now, that's a look at uh, the card craft menu. So I think, uh, yeah, I think probably have one more that I can jump into. What was I going to? The one that drove me the craziest for the longest time. All right. So we'll be back in a few seconds and we'll show you that one. All right, go figure. The one that I leave for the last is the one that has to load all different kinds of com content from the, <laughs> the workshop. And then of course, will not load correctly and crashed. So anyway, uh, we are in R Factor 2, if you haven't guessed it. And in R Factor 2, the old menu system, uh, some people absolutely love the old UI and some people actually can't stand it. So here we are in uh, build 1118 of the new UI. And you can see it's, uh, uh, if you know our factor, it's a huge upgrade from the previous version. And if you just look, because you have like this double menu system, so you have your main tabs up here and then you have the same tabs here again. So start race, watch community, news race, watch community, and then content. Personally, I would have just eliminated this whole thing up here and have this menu system cover this top part here. This, these are your main tabs here, and this is where you get all your news for what's happening. So they recently just, like I think yesterday, actually yes, uh, released the roadmap update for May, and this is where you can load the information from that update. This is where you can set up your race. So this is single player race, and I'll show you what I mean by these two different menus. So if I race here and I set my configuration, if I hit race, it's going to take me into a single player race. But if I want to customize it, then it's going to pop me into the menu where I have single and multiplayer. But if I go back to start here and I click race, that pops me into both menus, multiplayer and single player. So you see what I mean? That's why I would say either eliminate this race tab and just have this race tab so that this is here, but it brings you into the both options it makes it more it makes it a lot more streamlined and simple to be able to just click the race tab and when you click that you have single player and multiplayer in here which is what you get if you go there uh if you click watch this is basically all the recent races your replays your broadcasts or anything like that's going on in the community as far as recent races and then if we go to community and if i click more okay so no that's being pulled from the studio 397 form Okay, so now if I want to go back to that other menu, I have to click start and then go back to community here. So see what I mean? There's just extra clicks for nothing, which I could just click community and get friends, form, steam like that in that menu. And then one of the biggest things that kind of drove me crazy about, um, about our factor two was the fact that anytime I tried to get into a multiplayer race, sometimes it would take 30 minutes for me to find a race that I can get into. And the reason is because every time I went to click something, I would have to load items. You could have seven different types of spa. So um, the problem with that is that if you don't have the right version, you have to wait and you have to get there to download it. And once you download it, it's not the right content or you don't have the right car or the server is gone or the race is gone or whatever it may be. So it was always a hassle to do that. I'd rather just have no modded content or base content or whatever it may be that I can go in and just go and jump into a race that I know that I have content for that I purchased from R Factor 2. So for example here, see GP VWC. So that's a a league that I do races in sometimes they have all their own versions of everything, right? So four versions of spa version one, version one B version one C version one D. So see Sebring here, for example, you have how many different versions of Sebring? So I have Sebring 2018 version one, version 101, version 202. And so you see, there's like so many different variations on what you're getting. So I don't know which track and then some of them are not installed correctly. And anyway, so that's the new menu system. Let's go back to the start, start. 
And then, so you have all these five different tabs here. Now in settings, I'm used to it. So I know where to go. And again, the horizontal, I don't know why they love horizontal scrolling. A lot of these games love it. So you can go into your network options, all the different plugins, whether you have any, you know, extra HUDs or anything downloaded or like RS dash, for example, you can go into your replay menu. You can set your difficulty on your AI. And so you, all your different assists, your sound settings. So there's not a huge detail of what sound settings you can do as far as, you know, brakes and chassis and so forth, like in any other games that you saw. Uh, your display settings, these are all standard display settings. These are your basic graphic settings as far as resolution and refresh rate. And then this is where you can assign your controls. This is another thing that I find it can get quite frustrating. So these are your driving controls. As you get forward to, you know, as you start scrolling down to the others, that's where it kind of gets complicated because you need to know which buttons are mapping. And these don't necessarily always match the buttons that are in your, on your wheel. So it's almost a trial and error, basically. Go back and calibrate. Oh, there we go. So I had to load my profile. And so here in force feedback, there's not really a lot you want to play around with. I mean, I usually, the only thing I usually do is dial down the car specific force feedback to maybe 80, 90, or, you know, depending on the car. Um, but yeah, you have your basic steering, your, your throttle, your brake, your sensitivity, you can set your minimum maximum points. So this is basically telling you what all these different menu systems are here are all these different sub menus. It's just giving you a general overview of what you have set. So anyway, so yeah, so that's our factor two. It's getting much better. Um, you know, I'll come back and see once they get it to a point where it's close to final. We'll be right back with uh, iRacing. All right, we are back in iRacing. And we are taking a look at the new beta UI uh, before we jump into the in-game menu because as you know, iRacing uh, does not have really an in-game race browser or you know the game it's an external web uh, based browser but they've recently come up with this new beta ui which um, i'm quite happy to see because one of the things that i didn't like about uh, iRacing was the web-based um, menu system because it just really didn't it probably honestly out of everything had the worst user experience possible but um, that's my personal opinion i mean some people absolutely love it and have gotten used to it i have just not one of those you can see here in this main window is really where you get all the latest news from the iRacing world of what's happening as far as, you know, community races and, you know, and uh, competitions and events that are coming up. Below here you have, they call it a special offers, but it's more about um, quick jump areas. So you can get your volume discounts, referring a friend, race participation, uh, private race sessions, just more informative based uh, content. And then here you have their Twitter feed. And if you go to the iRacing eSports network, here you'll see, you know, any current races that are going on, which are broadcasting on their Twitch channel, you can see here. So that will populate there. If we go back to the main menu, here, the main area you're gonna wanna spend most of the time is go racing, of course. And in here, you can see I currently have B class and C class races selected. So that's what's showing up for me. But you can go in here and filter them out based on if you wanna show A class races, if you want to show D class races or, you know, whatever type of content that you want and you can make sure that it matches all tags. But for some reason, I still haven't figured it out. If I click match all tags and I just want to see B and C class races, it just disappears. So I'm not sure if it's something that I'm not doing correctly or if it's just a bug in the system because keep in mind, it is still a beta. In this menu, you can choose the type of racing you want to do, whether it's, you know, oval racing, NASCAR racing. I pretty much 100% of the time do road racing, as you can see by my race, uh, my I rating and safety rating. I haven't done any progression in oval, dirt or dirt oval. It's all been in road. So this is where you can filter those type of races out. In this menu, you can do, uh, you can look at what the current series are that's either by your filter or all series. So if I go and show like A class series as well, that'll show up on which current series in the season there are. I think the season finishes next week or this week, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And so this is the current series you can either participate in or you know ones that you wanna maybe star off so you can say, these are the ones that I would like to keep 
you know, as my favorites so that if I go in here and select favorites, it'll show up there. So that's really nice. The other things you have are user created races. So this is basically your server browser to see what races are currently online. And another one, which would be the time attack competition. So that's something I believe was that came out last year. So you can participate in time attack. So for example, if I go in here, I, these are the tracks that I do have. Uh, I can participate in those. Otherwise I have to purchase all the rest of them. And as other, one, other things undergo racing, you can create your own race based on the last race you created or create a completely new race. You can do a test drive and in test drive, you set up all your parameters where you choose the type of car you want. If I go in here, it shows all the cars that I currently own. I could select a car. For example, I'll select the Delera. I can choose the track and the same thing. I would go in and select the track that I want and the variation on the track. If it's a school or the full course or a reverse track or whatever it may be. I can set the track conditions and I can set the time of day. So once I have all these, I click here and I'm in doing a test drive. AI racing is fairly new. I don't have the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup, so I can't participate in that one, but I can go in and create um, a single race with AI or create a roster, which would be like a multidiscipline type race. Store obviously shows where all the content is. These are the content that I don't have. Um, and that would be the same thing for the tracks. And here I'll see all my content. The reason you're only seeing these cars is because I have those start off as my favorite cars, but you can, you know, show all the cars that are in your garage. And that would be the same thing for the tracks. Now in paint shop, you can go in here and select a car that you want to paint. For example, if I select my 718, I can go in and choose from preloaded liveries. I can change the number. I can change the you know wheels and sponsorship. And also the same thing I can do for my paint suit and helmet or I can upload swatches. Now, the other thing is a lot of people use um, an external app called Trading Paints, which you can completely customize uh, your, your car. If, if you're running leagues or team rate based races, you wanna have all your official liveries, you can upload that. And in teams, this will show the teams that you're members of. So I'm part of GRG Esports. This is, but actually, if you go into leagues, I see my league here and it tells me about the league who's the owner the roster any announcements that are to be made uh, the sessions that are upcoming and where we are with the season whether it's you know we're doing the oval or the custom i usually do the thursday night thunder so that's where you can check out details on your league results are all the results of your previous races and replays. Replays are really important because if you want to report somebody, you need to make sure you save this clip of that you want to, uh, where an incident happened and you want to report that. So that's why it's really important to, to kind of save your replays in here because you have to upload uh, a clip from that. So this is the basic menu here of navigating your racing, your content, your leagues and results. You can also go over here to the right where you see a little helmet. And if you click that and select the license menu, it shows you all the details based on your license. So right now it shows in my road class, I'm class B. Uh, hopefully in the next week when it changes over to the new season, I'll get my promotion. It shows me which races I've completed and participated in. And um, you, you, get, you can get credits based in game, but you have to believe participate in a minimum of four out of eight races. So we'll see when the season changes over what happens. It gives you your stats on your series. So I am in road. So this will show me all my stats based on, you know, my recent races. Uh, again, just a quick jump to your suit and helmet. If you want to change that up on the fly, any awards that you've, uh, or achievements that you've achieved and just basic setting here on, you know, your spotter, but in the settings here, it's not the full, um, menu settings that you get in game. So I'll show that next. I'll show you what you can do in game, but these are your basic things. You can launch the, um, the graphics configuration from here. Uh, if you want to change some of your, your steam overlay, if you want to enable that, if you want to clear some of your start cars, like what I was showing previously of my favorites. So there's just some of the basic settings. If you want to scale up your UI from here, but I just do all that in game. It just makes it easier just to go back and forth, um, from on track and see what the effect is. They've done a nice job of updating this. You know, they've a few little things here. You can just see which updates are available really quickly. You can check the cards that you have and if you need to update them. I don't update everything. I only update the 
uh, series and tracks that I do runs, but you can do all that updating here in the yellow bar. They're showing if there's any scheduled downtime that's coming. So you kind of get an idea to make sure you plan yourself correctly. So I, uh, I enjoy this anyway. So let's jump into the in-game and see what that menu looks like. So this is in-game on iRacing. And, you know, it's probably the one of those, um, one of those interfaces that is a bit more archaic, I should say. Uh, it's quite old. It hasn't been updated in uh, quite a long time. They've updated, you know, tracks and cars and all these different things here. So we will take a quick look through the in-game menu system. Okay, so first thing we'll do, we're just going to get into um, the options menu. Uh, the way it's set up is the first thing you have on your menu system is obviously the wheel settings. Um, you can set all your driving aids and your gearbox, but what you need to do first thing is to go in and map these out. Map your gearbox, your pedals, and your steering. One little trick that you might or might not know of here is that if you, when you start, when you load this up, you have it set to strength. If you click strength, it'll set it to newton meters so i'm running a dd so i have it on average with most cars running at 60 newton meters and then the wheel forces you set to what the actual forces of your wheel are so if you're running for example a club sport wheel uh wheelbase you would be like six to eight uh cls elite would be closer to six i believe if i'm not mistaken but then your options in here are what you see on the screen as far as your delta your external displays so logitech arx i have a logitech g513 so the lighting on the keyboard will actually be lit up based on what's happening uh whether i'm in practice session or if the quality's over or if i'm at rev limit and vibrate pedals so if you have for example club sport pedals v3 you can use this to actually have vibration in your accelerator and your brake letting you know whether lock up or wheel slip and uh, so on these are your graphic settings so these can be quite overwhelming um you know with the way the graphics are done in in iRacing whether you have these on low or on high high detail you're not going to notice much of that so it's better just to keep them down and try and get as many uh, uh get a better refresh rate on in your uh, game and running it smoother but i think one of the most important things in here is to set your field of view so obviously get your your monitor width and your the visible width and your viewing distance how far you are from the screen and it'll calibrate the field of view that it thinks you should have and i can tell you it's quite spot on so don't i wouldn't be adjusting that too much to try and get it to be different but because the game is uh, really quite good at calibrating the proper field of view um, you know replay options you have and sound you know based on you know whether you want the spotter where you want the spotter audio to be coming through if you want to enable voice chat so voice chat which is in game you can have set to push to talk or just constant these are all your mappings per car so you can set it where it's global if you have one wheel say for example if you just have a formula v2 or if you just have the universal xbox hub and you're using that you can map these all and just leave it as is globally for every car but if you have multiple wheels or if you want to have different settings for each car you must check this use custom controls for this car and that will save all these individual settings that you do between there and here per car so for example i have specific settings set for the Delara Formula 3. It's also what I have here. And whatever is grayed out is because those are not available in that car. In Garage, obviously, you know, you can do your car setup here. You can save all your setups or you can go to the iRacing setups that are default. So baseline, your formula, low, high, and medium downforce. And if you're racing on an oval. Let's stop there. I don't need to drive very far. There, we'll just pause that. So here you can adjust all the different ways you want it to be from the gearbox view, whether you want it to be TV view. You can change all your different view angles, so like chopper view. Uh, where is it? Chopper view. So basically if that's there. You can choose the different drivers. So I'm, it's only me right now, but if there's other drivers, you'd have your list of drivers, much like you have your list of camera views. And here you have your chat. Over here you have all the entries that are in the race. You have the laps and your detail in each lap, and then you'll have information on this session. That's the menu system for uh, iRacing. I guess when it all comes down to it, 
Uh, it really, it's a personal thing. It depends on what you're looking for and what type of menu system you like. I could say personally, uh, ACC and Race Room are the two that I that I enjoy probably the most. If you look at something like Codemasters, it's probably the one that's the easiest for newcomers getting into sim racing. Uh, for them to, you know, just, I want to jump into my options, set up my wheel and get going and just jump into my career. Like something like iRacing, people are really, really into sim racing and get all the technical aspects of it. We'll know how to, you know, browse through the menu system but if you're fairly new at sim racing it might be a little bit overwhelming so they might shy away from it i hope you enjoyed it please uh, subscribe and if you want to see more of this type of content we will see you guys again soon take care mm -hmm.